Hello again. So today we are going to start with a cautionary tale and I am Mickey and I am not your mama's minister. So we're going to talk about love today. So let's start with this a story and this is from my own personal book and this is one, a lesson in no matter how skilled you get as a practitioner of mystical work and spiritual work, everybody makes mistakes, everybody does, does boo-boos. Um, this is why I constantly encourage people to think and research and think again before you do anything. So many, many years ago, I was going through a dry spill, spell by choice and I decided, you know what, I want a new relationship. Let's go ahead and do something. So instead of going through all of the, uh, the, the thought process and, and paperwork and lists and so forth and so on, uh, since I wasn't looking for love, I was just looking for, you know, something to pass the time with or somebody to pass the time with, I figured, oh, I'll just ju jump into it and throw something out there to the universe really quick. And so I said... Um, I got all my mojo stuff together and I said, I want the exact opposite of me. That's all I said. Now, uh, about a week later, I go into the, to a store, I'm looking for a, a Christmas gift for my father. And there behind the counter is this beautiful man, blonde, blue, long blonde hair, blue, bright blue eyes, this great smile. He is very obviously a workout fanatic, very built and very masculine, just ultra, you know, that just image of mas masculinity. And so I was like, hubba hubba. And then he was like, hubba hubba. And so it led to a few months of a relationship. Anyway, halfway through that relationship, I found out that he is kind of like a borderline white supremacist. Which, of course, is the, you know, exact opposite of me. He's also served time in prison for a violent crime. Again, the exact opposite of me. And so, um, even though it was definitely an enjoyable few months, it was hard to explain to people that, oh yeah, I dated a white supremacist, and it still is. I have many, many loved ones who love to bring that up. And, um... So, and it all came down to me not thinking prior to uh, doing my mystical work. And so, we have an entire history, history of mankind, of people, uh, of huge destructive moments of, due to people's relationships and people's desires for what maybe they shouldn't have been des desiring in the first place. And so we've got uh, mythological Helen of Troy, you know, an entire war started over a relationship that uh, never should have happened. Things like that. And so, which, by the way, Helen, Helen of Troy is an awesome person to petition, having to do with love, beauty, um, and also when you are wanting to get out of a re one relationship and get into a relationship with another person. So endings of relationships and even uh, beginnings of relationships. So uh, getting back to the, the thing about it. So most long-term practitioners, we have enough experience knowing that, that sometimes you need to put the energy out there for a proper love or somebody that is going to fit you well because we m most of us have experienced those clients or friends or family um, in fact I think most of us even those of you who are not practitioners uh, have experienced where you're sitting there going scratching your head going why are they together and that's kind of what you want to avoid of course because if you get together with somebody is, who is not a good match for you, then you run the risk of it ending and you being broken hearted, eating too much ice cream, drinking too much tequila. I speak from experience. Not really from the broken hearted part, but definitely the breakups. Breakups are difficult for everybody, including me. And um, so it's really, really important that you know what you want. And 
I like to do this. I know we've talked about this before, and this actually isn't going to be a long part of this video, but um, remember to, when you are sitting down and doing any type of mystical work, you want to actually have a an aid with you to remind you of what you definitely want. There have been people who have come to me and said, I want so and so, uh, or you know, I want somebody to love me and uh, then I ask them, well, give me 10 things that are absolute musts for the relationship, for your partner. And they'll be like, oh, fuck, I have no idea. So you really want to know what you're looking for, what you absolutely won't put up with, and what you absolutely need in your relationship and need in your partner. Um, and always, always remember that if you, if your partner is giving you what you want, then and you have, especially if you have mojoed for them and you are not giving them what they want, then you really need to stop and think about yourself and maybe you need to consider couples counseling and so forth and so on. So, um, so I wanted to discuss the difference between um, drawing a proper love to yourself and then drawing uh, a specific person. When you go out there and you find somebody and you're like oh my god he or she is perfect for for me and you sit there and then you come to me and you say this person is perfect for me i want them more than anything and i have had so many situations where this has happened i'll do the work for you but i will give you the warning that that are you sure you want to go specifically after this person rather than just put it out there to find a good good love for you no, no, I definitely want it. Um, we see uh, a very, very, very well-written description of that with the novel Practical Magic. Um, the, of course, the movie is lovely and wonderful, but the novel is fantastic because the woman who comes to the aunts and says, I want him more than anything, he has to leave his wife uh, and be with me. Her ending, um, her life after that is not a happy life and so it's kind of the same thing in real life um, that is very important that you remember that when you're going after a specific person one you are doing a controlling of their will so you are causing them to have feelings for you which may not have happened naturally and if it didn't happen naturally that's the first thing is that you're controlling somebody the second thing is that for the rest of the time that you two are together um, or you and five more people who knows but the rest of the time that you are in this relationship you will subconsciously question yourself is this person with me because i mojoed them or because i i did a working to make them be with me and that can cause a lot of feelings of insecurity feelings of doubt um would this pe person be with me if i hadn't done a spell on them so you need to really think about that um, and so, but once you've thought about whether or not that's something that you, um, are comfortable with, if you are comfortable with the, the ethics behind that, and you are comfortable with the idea that you won't be sure whether or not they would be naturally in love with you if you hadn't done a, sp a spell work or working for them, then, um, if you still decide to do it, then you you have to realize that it's going to be a very potent one. You're going to have to do a very potent one. This isn't just like, uh, you know, lighting a pink candle or a red candle and, and sending out to the universe and the deities and the spirits to draw the right person to you. This is saying, John Doe, I want you. I want to ride you like a rodeo pony. And so uh, you have to be with me. There are a number of different uh, spells and workings that are specifically for that, that I want this specific person. Now, usually I, I will uh, try to convince the client not to go with that if it's not somebody that they're already involved with. However, if we're talking about a 10-year marriage or a 20-year marriage and all of a sudden he or she is, you know, going out on the town with somebody else and you want them to stay home, that's completely different. If you're wanting to do it at that point, I completely understand. It's, you know, it's definitely one of those things where you're, uh, you, you are kind of within your spiritual rights to 
to be like, whoa, I've, I've put a lot of my life into this relationship and you just deciding that it's done because you want a little piece of tail on the side is not okay with me. However, when it's somebody that is just lonely or bored, you know, which is usually my case when I break down and do something for myself. And so um, when it's something like that, I really encourage you to always put it out there, do a working to draw the right love to you, to draw the right partner to you, even if it's not going to be a long lasting partner, even if you are um, kind of on the cynical side, side or you recognize that people change and so it may not last past a year or two years or whatever, um, I still encourage people to to draw a general, you know, put that general energy out there because you're more likely to get somebody that is going to be better suited for you rather than somebody that you are having to control with this mystical work. Um, and so then it's almost like a spiritual invitation to the world. Whoever is going to be a good match for me, you know, I, I welcome you into my life. So, <clears throat> but if you're going to go with the controlling, now, there are a lot of ways that you can do this, um, and there are a lot of different, uh, different workings that will work for uh, drawing a specific person to you. However, I really like Anna Masola, Lonely Soul, and I'm sure that you've seen her. It's a beautiful woman in chains in, uh, very obviously, like in a prison cell, there are usually prison bars behind the picture. Um, or in the in the uh, background of the picture and then there are flames coming up so she is burning in hell and there are a lot of different legends as to how Anima Sola got in that position but from the most common the co common legends and common myths are that she uh, she traded her soul for life with the, per the specific person that she wanted and so she gets to stay there in those chains and flames until somebody takes her place. So this is when you realize that I need this person. I want this person so bad that I don't give a fuck about anything else, including um, eternity. Now, there are not a lot of people who will openly admit to, uh, yeah, I'm willing to do that. However, speaking from experience with my clientele, I will tell you that it is more common than you think. Most of us would sit there and say, wait a second, so you would trade your soul in exchange for, you know, a, a tight relationship? Are you sure that you want to do that? But there are a lot of people out there that are more than happy to do that. And so basically what it is, is you're just getting that image. It doesn't matter whether you're going to use a holy card. You can get on the internet and print out a picture of her but you're going to focus on that image so this is going to take a lot of visualization this is going to take a lot of meditation um and so you're going to focus on that image of her there are candles out there with her image on it um there are even statues or figurines with her and so you're going to take that and you are going to focus on her and tell her that if she brings this person to you that you will take her place after you pass away doesn't speed up your death death any it doesn't you know curse you or anything like that you are just agreeing to take her place until the next person comes along and decides that they want somebody so bad um, that they just can't stand it and that they're willing to trade everything else for it um, but again you know th this is one of those things where it, are you sure that that person is the right one for you if they are not naturally falling in love with you if they're not naturally wanting to be with you um, this is uh, this is not a game you know none of it is a game but but life is a game and so deciding to do that is definitely something that you better be fucking sure um, you know because you don't want to get into this and then because what happens is it doesn't change the person so you found you know what you suppose is mr right or miss right and they uh turn out to be complete douchebags and you're stuck with that douchebag because you have done this mojo that has drawn them to you and it's an obsession 
um, the end result is definitely an obsession. They will continue to stalk you. They will can, you know, I really encourage you to go ahead and read the read um, Practical Magic because I really like that using that as an example when people come to me and say that they want to do an Anamasola or if they want to do something to uh, cause somebody specific to fall in love with them. Depending on the strength of the working that you do, and uh, let's face it, most of us don't half-ass our workings, and so depending on the strength of it and the will that you put, put behind it, the tears, the passion, everything behind it, then that is exactly what we're talking about. We're talking about that person being completely obsessed with you. and. Um, so sometimes your feelings for that person fade because you realize, oh my God, this is not the right person for me. They're abusive or they're an alcoholic or they, you know, whatever the, the thing may be, um, they're cheaters, you know, because just because they're obsessed with you does not mean that they won't want to, you know, boff somebody else. And so it just means that they want to primarily boff you and that you definitely better not be, you know, straying because they're going to be keeping an eye on you. And so you really, really need to think about that, especially um, with the with the kind of stalking things going on right now. It's qu quite the scare. And so the last thing that you want is to, or I would hope, is to draw love to you that your partner is stalking you and your partner is keeping a, a, a tight rein on you and making sure that you you are there so, and that you get to spend all your time with them. And I think that might be it. So, like I said, no judgment on my part. You want to do it, go for it. You want to hire me to do it, go for it. Um, it's not that I won't do it. It's just that you have to understand the end result. I, I have had clients come back to me later on and say, you've got to break it. Okay, it's really not that easy. That is a promise that you've made with a spirit. And so that's kind of between you and the spirit. Yes, I may have done the work for you, but you're the one that went ahead and made the agreement. And so that's kind of out of my hands at that point. And that's the thing is, anytime you do any type of love working or controlling working, actually, um, you have to realize that that uh, it's very hard to break that. It's not it's not an easy easy task, and uh, it's definitely one that I'm gonna sit there and balk at you and say, really, really, after all the warnings that I gave you, and then now now you realize that oh yeah oh Mickey was right. Not don't get me wrong, I love hearing oh Mickey was right. Um, but I think that might be it. I wish you well, and I wish you tons and tons of love. I wish you tons of love. Um, may you be blessed with people who love you and people that love, you know, that you love and just be surrounded and filled with love. It is a beautiful thing and it's glorious and magnificent and completely divine. So I think that's it. And... Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and comment. And uh, I will talk to you soon. Many blessings.